Are we as strong as we should be? Are we as strong as we must be if we're going to maintain our independence? Our lives have been shaped by the works of individual pioneers throughout our history. These individuals were men and women who sought to answer burning questions, prove an impossible idea, or live a lifelong dream. And in each case, they gave us a new horizon, a new dawn for the betterment of mankind. A man whose life's work has resulted in yet another new horizon, a new dawn for the health of mankind, is Dr. Myron Wentz. His work in the areas of virology, immunology, and nutritional science have impacted scores of lives across the globe. Hello, I'm Dennis Waitley. This is not Dr. Myron Wentz's life story because his story is largely untold, nor is it a tribute to what he's done, for he'd be the first to tell you there's so much left undone. It's a brief glimpse into the vision of a giant of a man with an unquenchable thirst for knowledge and truth. I had the opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with him about his insights and experiences and came away with the feeling that I was in the presence of someone who has both the passion and the ability to uncover the secrets of human health and well-being for future generations. I dream of a world free from pain and suffering, a world free of chronic degenerative disease. My journey has been devoted to learning what life is, what is required to sustain life, and how to defend against those factors that are a threat to life. For me, this has become an endless pursuit. We live too short and die too long. When people hear me make that ominous declaration, they appear puzzled and shocked. How can this be, they wonder. Aren't we actually living longer than any other generation before us? Yes, we in the wealthiest industrialized societies are living longer in poor health than ever before. Ironically, we have replaced the infectious diseases that killed our ancestors with degenerative diseases that are largely man-made. Due to our own assault on the environment, as we have exploited our natural resources and as a result of our lifestyle choices, we and our children are paying a terrible price for our material success. We have poisoned our nest and have developed a toxic cradle that has given rise to a whole host of illnesses that were largely unknown a century ago. We are no longer dying from the same diseases we did in previous generations. Infectious diseases such as influenza, pneumonia, tuberculosis, smallpox, diphtheria, and polio felled our ancestors until the early decades of the past century. Now we're dying of heart attacks, stroke, cancer, diabetes, and other degenerative diseases. We all know someone whose life has been influenced and shaped by a chronic condition, an overweight sedentary neighbor with the beginning signs of heart disease, a friend battling cancer, a cousin needing daily insulin injections because of adult onset diabetes, an elderly relative with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease, a grandmother or aunt with osteoporosis, a family with a child who is developed mentally or physically challenged. Most of these individuals are not in nursing homes or hospitals. They are living among us. They are us. And they are previews of a future documentary about our children. By 2030, nearly 150 million Americans are projected to have chronic degenerative disease at a cost to the United States of nearly $800 billion annually in direct medical costs. No government will ever be able to finance that kind of expenditure growth let alone the hundreds of billions of dollars a year 
and lost productivity. What I have learned thus far is what true health is and is not. True health is not simply how you feel when you wake up each morning, nor is it a favorable lab, radiology, or physical exam report from your physician. True health is not based on the sculpture of your physique, nor your ability to compete in a triathlon. True health is being absolutely the best you can be with the conditions you were given and the situation in which you now live. True health is not just the absence of disease. It is empowering our bodies to perform at their optimum level. Dr. Wentz is dedicated to the imperative that good health cannot and must not be taken for granted. It should be guarded with utmost security and attention every day of our lives. That's the most effective way to avoid degenerative disease and thus achieve the maximum number of years of active, enjoyable living. Only by maintaining good health can we do what we want to do and need to do for ourselves and our loved ones. Dr. Wentz believes we have the mistaken belief that chronic disease is the disease of our aging population. Cardiovascular disease and other chronic diseases begin in childhood. Dietary and lifestyle habits in our early years establish long-term outcomes. We are overfed and undernourished. In a time-starved world, we also are becoming a nutrition-starved society. Combine nutrient deficiency as a result of nutrient-poor, overprocessed foods with the free radical damage resulting from oxidative stress in our toxic environment and harmful lifestyle choices, and we face an epidemic of degenerative diseases that is almost insurmountable. We can no longer wait for disease to arrive at our homes as full-blown, life-threatening events, and then hope and pray for a cure. We can no longer tolerate a toxic cradle of pollution and at the same time provide our children with only 1% of the dietary basics they need to help fight oxidative damage from free radicals. The answers, I believe, lie in a new awareness about life at the cellular level. The human cell is elegant, resourceful, and marvelously intricate. It is the fundamental unit of life. Poison it, injure it, or starve it, and the resulting damage causes degeneration and disease. Nurture it, protect it, and feed it with the nutrients it needs, and it repairs itself, providing health and longevity. All of us begin as a single cell. That one cell divides into two, two into four, and so on, with the newly generated cells programmed to perform specific missions throughout our lives. The trillions of cells work in synergy with the universe we call our body. Every day, billions of new cells are produced to replace those who have served before them. I refer to these cells and what they are capable of doing as invisible miracles. Dr. Wentz's incredible journey on the road less traveled in search of invisible miracles taking place at the cellular level began in the small town of Napoleon, North Dakota. Born in 1940, the youngest of three brothers, Myron Wentz had a fairly typical boyhood for the time and place. It was a modest life in a loving home with good examples to follow. He lettered in the major high school sports, loved music, sang in the choir, played in the band, and went to church every Sunday at the urging of his mother, Bertha, who hoped he might one day become a minister. I asked him about his early recollections. In addition to my love of sports and music, I also was very interested in the life sciences. There were several events during high school that could be described as life-forming. One was my introduction to the work of Dr. Linus Pauling that I eagerly studied and wrote term papers about. He was a brilliant scientist and the only individual to have 
been awarded two unshared Nobel Prizes. I was not only fascinated by his studies of vitamin C as a preventive therapy for diseases, but also by his global perspective and contributions beyond his primary educational discipline. From his example as a maverick in his field, I learned to persist when I believed I was correct, despite the criticism of others, especially those in positions of authority. Another special kinship young Myron Wentz felt with Linus Pauling was the fact that both of their fathers died at an early age. Like his German ancestors, who had emigrated from Russia before him, Myron's father Adam was a farmer. Unlike most of his contemporaries, he also was a businessman. He wasn't content just to farm. He and a younger brother started a hardware store, a furniture store, and then bought a John Deere farm implement shop and a Ford dealership. My father was highly regarded as a man of generosity and compassion. Years later, when I was coming home from college and would stop by a farm or store in our area, all I had to do was mention that I was Adam Wentz's son, and they would roll out the red carpet for me. It seemed that everybody I met had been a recipient of my father's help or generosity or that they simply had a great deal of admiration and respect for him. That made it even harder to have lost him when I was 17. He died at 57 from heart disease, which he had lived with as far back as I can remember, having spent time in hospitals and long-term care facilities. I believe that some of my drive to contribute to society can be attributed to a desire to compensate for his loss and to be worthy of his respect as he was respected by others. Reflecting on my early beginnings from the prairie of Napoleon, North Dakota, one memory stands out as a defining moment. When I announced to my mother my intention to go into medical science, she looked at me and said softly, I wish you had been born earlier so you could have done something to allow your father to live longer. Her words left an indelible imprint that became one of the catalysts for my dedication to do what I could do to help others fulfill their lives with well-being and health. After earning a doctorate in microbiology with an emphasis in immunology from the University of Utah, Dr. Wentz positioned his career to create and develop tools that could be used by healthcare professionals in dealing with the scourge of infectious diseases present in society. He decided to develop tests for the many viral infections in the hope that such tests could be completed and reported to physicians before their patients left the hospital, much more rapidly than was the standard practice. He was impatient and not content to pursue the more predictable career path of most of his classmates and peers. I sold everything I owned, got a loan from the Small Business Administration, bought the equipment I needed to develop viral diagnostic assays, and moved into a Utah research facility formerly occupied by the Salk Institute for Biological Studies. My company, Gull Laboratories, was launched in September of 1974 and by June of 1977, only two and a half years later, several of my viral diagnostic assays were cleared by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration and were ready for use by physicians and hospitals. I was spurred forward by the knowledge that the large pharmaceutical firms had been attempting unsuccessfully for years to do the same thing I was trying to do. Dr. Wentz knew if he was going to compete successfully as a David against Goliath, he would have to have the most complete, accurate, and quality test available anywhere, despite the huge disparity in financial resources. The breakthrough test that firmly established Dr. Wentz's success worldwide was the assay for the Epstein-Barr virus. The world, especially Europe, was waiting for that assay. Even though he had developed over 30 diagnostic tests, the Epstein-Barr virus assay was the one he became identified with. 
It was a test that could not be duplicated elsewhere and to this day remains the gold standard for diagnosing an infection with that virus. It was a source of pride for me to have looked beyond the financial rewards that accompanied the success of Gull Laboratories to the understanding that here was a case of previously unmet medical needs being filled. Here were tools for health professionals that could immediately benefit patients. One reason for my success in developing viral diagnostics was the quality of the cell culture operations at Gull Laboratories. Viruses can't reproduce on their own, but must hijack the metabolic machinery of the host cell to manufacture the components, which then go into assembly of the viral particles. I knew that to develop the best viral assays, I had to produce the best viral antigens. But since viruses need host cells to reproduce, I couldn't produce good viruses unless I could grow healthy, fully competent cells. Gull Laboratories had one of the finest cell culture facilities of the day. During my many years of hands-on work with the cultures, I developed an exceptional training program and attracted and developed some of the industry's best cell culture technologists. Among the secrets of our success at Gull was a comprehensive knowledge of the nutritional requirements of the different cell lines. With the right combination of all the nutrients essential for life, I could maintain cells in a healthy state almost indefinitely without any signs of degeneration or disease. What I didn't yet realize at the time was that this knowledge would bring about the revolutionary next stage in my scientific journey. The principles of good nutrition are universal. If we can supply nutrients to the human body in a comprehensive manner on a daily basis, with a full spectrum of essential nutrients in the right forms, amounts, and in the proper balance, we can achieve long-term health. Health, after all, begins at the cellular level. The great success experienced by Gull Laboratories during the late 1970s and 80s did not come without a price. By the end of the 1980s, Dr. Wentz was totally consumed with his work and there were never enough hours for him to fulfill his mission as CEO, COO, and Director of Research of Gull Laboratories. His own energy and endurance were being tested, and he became aware that his own health was slowly beginning to decline. He became convinced that simply improving the quality of his diet and exercising more were not enough. One day, while I was sitting at my desk during a phone call, I happened to pick up the plastic bottle containing the nutritional supplements that had been recommended by a friend as the best on the market and I began to read the list of ingredients and percentages of the contents. I hung up the phone and read the label again, hardly able to believe my eyes. I ran upstairs to the laboratory and grabbed one of the scientists and exclaiming in dismay, Look what they're putting into bottles and selling us and calling them nutritional supplements to enhance our health. If we fed this stuff to ourselves in this lab, we'd be out of business in no time. They wouldn't survive. There was no comparison to what the human cell cultures in our laboratories were being fed. When we analyzed the products from a number of different manufacturers and suppliers, Many of the products did not even contain what was listed on the labels. The amounts and ratios of different vitamins and minerals were inadequate and out of balance, and some of the ingredients would actually have made the benefits of other ingredients worthless. On that fateful day, I decided to mobilize my resources and get into the fray. Here was a need that demanded to be met. Just as viral test kits had filled a critical need for tools to help 
healthcare practitioners help diagnose infectious diseases in their patients. So we needed the essential nutrients as tools to help our own cells defend against and repair the damage done to them by infectious and oxidative agents. In 1992, Dr. Wentz became dedicated to solving the problems of cell nutrition for the human body with the same passion and persistence he had applied to disease diagnosis at Bell Laboratories. His ability to grow healthy and vibrant cells was unmatched. He knew what cells needed for growth and repair and also what would protect them from oxidative damage. He formed a new company to develop these products and named it USANA, a word with Greek and Latin roots meaning true health. True health is what I wanted to attain for myself and my family. And this became my most significant challenge in the ensuing decade. Based on everything I've learned about growing healthy human cells, there are only two factors to consider to prevent cellular degeneration, nutrient deficiency and oxidative damage. And USANA Health Sciences was created to supply the answers through nutritional and personal care products so that people could deal with these two issues. The mode of action of the USANA products is on the cell. The knowledge I gained over the years from studies and even more from hands-on experience in virology, immunology, and cell culture resulted in a concept that I call cellular nutrition. What does that mean? In summary, it means ensuring that the cells of our body receive all the nutrients they need for performing all cellular functions, repairing and regenerating structures, and preventing oxidative damage. The nutrients need to be in the correct forms, the right amounts, and the proper balance. The ideal diet for maintaining healthy cells and healthy bodies involves much more than we might expect. Through many years of research in microbiology and virology, I had seen that nutrition was the major influence on the health of human cells and culture. When I combined that insight with studies on infectious and degenerative diseases, Observing how they attacked the body one cell at a time, there was no escaping the conclusion that optimal nutrition at the cellular level had the potential for preventing and even reversing degenerative disease. During its first decade of operation, USANA experienced explosive growth and was and continues to be well received by consumers throughout North America and several other countries as well as by many healthcare professionals who are impressed with the quality of USANA's nutritional products. USANA is a source of great satisfaction to Dr. Wentz. Nowhere else in the world, as far as he knows, are nutritional products of such quality being produced. He had every reason to be satisfied with that, but found himself with a nagging sense of restlessness, despite the success of USANA and time and effort the newer company required. Dr. Wentz knew the war against degenerative disease was not yet won, and he needed to be certain it was being fought on all fronts. Then, by one of those strokes of fate that make you wonder just how closely you're being watched from above, I happened to learn about the Strauss Estate, just south of Rosarito Beach in Baja, California, Mexico. Conrad and Beryl Strauss, of the Levi Strauss family had purchased property overlooking the Bahia del Descansos or the Bay of Rest and had built a mansion there. Conrad had critical health issues and they extensively researched the various factors that would contribute to the best health environment in which he could live out his remaining years. With the resources to live just about anywhere in the world they had chosen this spot. After Conrad's passing, Beryl returned to the eastern U.S. to be with her family and friends. I decided to purchase the property for conversion into a new kind of medical facility. 
son of Eve would be an example of what a health and healing center could be if the newest advances in nutrition and detoxification were employed and if a holistic approach to the body and the patient was made the basis of diagnosis and treatment. Without being fully aware of what I was getting myself into, I had begun to formulate the next phase of my life's journey. During the negotiations with lawyers and real estate agents, I heard about studies that NASA and the Scripps Institute had done on the site. They indicated that it had an unusual combination of climatic, geophysical, atmospheric, and geomagnetic factors that did indeed make it a unique location for health and healing. The Strausses had made a very good choice. But the scientific data alone were not what convinced me that this was the place. One moody, overcast day, I visited the residence on my own without real estate people. On previous visits, I had been very aware of a powerful sense of peace and calm that overcame me as soon as I walked onto the property, and I wanted to investigate it further. I walked down the slope to the edge of the cliff, beckoned by a caressing breeze off the ocean. Looking down, I saw the tide pools appear as the ocean slowly withdrew, exposing in each pool one of nature's most wonderful ecosystems. I looked up to see a brown pelican floating regally along the coastline. Riding the breeze so efficiently, he rarely needed to flap his wings. Before I knew it, this great, calm, majestic bird was right there in front of me. In that startled moment, as we made eye contact, it spoke to me. We have been waiting for you. Yes, yes. This is it. This is it. We have been waiting for you. The Strauss discovery was to have a new destiny. Both Gull Laboratories and USANA had been ahead of the curve when Dr. Wentz founded them, but Sanaviv was a step still further. Gull had developed diagnostic tests with triple the lifespan of most medical products. USANA introduced a level of nutritional supplementation that he felt was unavailable anywhere else. And Sanaviv would create a concept of medicine, healing, and wellness that many people talked about, but few seriously thought possible. Sanaviv would take the nutritional principles of USANA into the clinical arena of the seriously compromised. It would, by using methods of detection and diagnosis too futuristic for acceptance by the medical establishment, open a new realm of therapeutic opportunities. And with his design, Sanaviv would provide the most toxic-free environment technologically possible to free and encourage the natural healing abilities and processes of the body. Son of Eve is meant to sort out the confusion and clearly reveal to the world what needs to occur for the body to heal itself. We have learned that most medical inventions, such as pharmaceuticals and surgery, do not cure, but rather complicate the healing process. In contrast to the chemical and mechanical approach that's been the focus of medicine in the past, I believe there are powerful influences on the body from other factors, including the spirit, that we don't fully understand. Sanaviv is exploring these factors to learn how to use them to promote health and healing. The best part is that we are making a difference Sanaviv is saving lives and is adding years of productive living to the lives of its guests. In a recent review of all admissions with symptomatic degenerative disease, I saw that Sanaviv may have the finest record of successful disease outcomes, reversals, and improvement of quality of life of any medical facility in existence. Furthermore, I expect that in time, our successful long-term outcomes will surpass all currently used modalities in allopathic medicine for degenerative disease. 
Sinovive is adding evidence to Dr. Wentz's conviction that healthy lifestyles, including optimal nutrition, are key to long-term good health and apply to the reversal of all degenerative diseases, even those which in conventional medicine are considered incurable. He has poured his heart and soul into this endeavor. For him, Sanaviv will extend the world of difference that is being made by USANA. Sanaviv was designed for all who want to improve their health, no matter where they are in the spectrum of cellular degeneration. Sanaviv is a place where miracles invisible and visible are allowed to happen. I can't say it often enough. The cell is the fundamental unit of life and proper cellular function is a basic building block of health. I concluded long ago that in designing a healthy lifestyle our goal ought to be to identify nutritional patterns, physical activity regimens, and other factors that directly promote cellular health. In other words, we need to live our lives in ways that support robust cell growth, that promote proper cell functioning, that minimize cellular damage from free radicals and other stressors, and that allow cells to repair themselves when damage occurs, and that supports cell death, apoptosis, as needed. We need to take charge of our own health and determine our own fate. We need to embrace, on a personal level, the principles of preventive health care. We need to adopt the lifestyle elements that are now known to dramatically reduce the risk of chronic degenerative disease. We need to start today. And just as important, we need to encourage our children our siblings, our parents, and our friends to do the same. Making a lifelong commitment to health means making the pursuit of health a way of life. For me, this was relatively easy. As the founder of Gull Laboratories, the Sana Health Sciences, and Sanaviv Medical Retreat, I have devoted my professional life to issues of human health. I continue to read books on health and articles in medical journals virtually every day. But for most others, maintaining a lifelong commitment is not easy. Clearly, this is one of the biggest challenges in preventive health care. How do we encourage people to make necessary lifestyle changes long term? I wish I had the answer. I don't. I know that some don't find commitment to health until after suffering a non-fatal heart attack or experiencing some other brush with death. Others succeed by joining health-related support groups, communities of people who share common goals and support one another in making valuable lifestyle changes. Yasana is one example. There are many ways to succeed in this endeavor, and I remain optimistic that most people who develop a true passion for health will find a method that works for them. This optimism is fundamental to my dream of a world free of pain and suffering, a world free of chronic degenerative disease. Take charge of your health. Share my vision. Life is a wonderful celebration. Nothing is more beautiful than a healthy life in full bloom. The title of this video has a double meaning. While Dr. Wentz sees human cells as invisible miracles in their incredible ability to replicate and heal themselves, he also sees something much more profound and mysterious at work. Each cell has a distinct function, and yet within every cell is all the information necessary to produce the unique person you see in the mirror every day. This is indeed miraculous. However, the real miracle is that the cell's activities are too complex to be explained and they could not have come about by accident or chance assembly. The definition of a miracle is an event that appears inexplicable by the laws of nature and so is held to be supernatural in origin or an act of God. 
a fitting synonym of miracle is wonder. And if any events have caused me more wonder in my life than my experiences in growing healthy cells, they would have to be the lives of my two children, David and Julie. Miracles occur as acts of creation and also as events involving healing, regeneration, and renewal. I have witnessed them with my own eyes, especially associated with anecdotal testimonials provided by associates and families of the Asana Health Sciences over the past decade, and more dramatically with patients at Sanavid Medical Retreat. These miracles come from the power of the body to heal itself through the remarkable ingenuity and creativity of the cells. Today's medical advances are sometimes called miracles, but I don't think these achievements can match for a moment what the cell does as a matter of routine. The greatest invisible miracle of all is the existence of life itself. According to the laws of physics, it should not be possible. The exquisite organization of every cell and every living organism appears to contradict scientific logic. Living matter involves forces we are unable to comprehend. Although we are able to artfully, articulately, and passionately theorize about life, we can't begin to understand the miracle responsible for our creation. I believe in the beauty and harmony of life with the utmost confidence that we are here by design, not by accident or aberration. The gift of life is not a treasure hunt. Success can't be measured through the collection of material possessions. Happiness cannot be traveled to, owned, earned, or worn. Happiness is the spiritual experience of living every minute with love, grace, and gratitude. The treasure is within you. It needs only to be uncovered and discovered. I hope you sense the passion and urgency I feel about what we've discussed in this brief reflection of my involvement with cellular nutrition. I'm always asked why I'm so impatient and so engrossed in the plight of human health. It's difficult to sum up a mission in life in so few images and words, but I can say that when a life is created, although not given any guarantee of survival in the world, that life is as important as any that has gone before it or that will follow it. Whereas earlier in my career, my focus was on regaining optimal health for myself and family, our mission must now be to unravel the mysteries that will provide hope and health for future generations. I am committed to doing all I can, using all of my talents and resources while on this earth to further God's purpose and to reveal more opportunities for every man, woman, and child to experience the wonder of invisible miracles. <laughs>